In this video, we are going to learn how to add a search filter in your UI5 integration card. So at the moment, this is how our UI5 integration card looks like. Um, this is a card of type list and uh, it is displaying invoice data from the Northwind OData service. And uh, we have created a numeric header. And as part of this numeric header, we have incorporated a few KPIs here. And uh, this card was created in the Business Application Studio and deployed here, which is our business site created using the build work zone. Uh, if any of these steps are not clear, please have a look at the previous videos. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. So at the moment, the user has no influence over the data that he sees on the card. The, um, the OData service request is sent to the server and based on the results that we receive, the response that we receive, the top five records from that are just simply displayed out to the user here. Uh, in this uh, video, we will see how to add a search bar over here in the top. Uh, this will then allow the user to filter down his results based on certain criteria. Uh, there are different types of uh, filters that can be added in a UI5 integration card. The first one is the search filter. Now this filter allows you to type in a certain search criteria and then based on this search criteria, the records are going to get filtered. The second type of filter that exists is called as the select filter. Now the select filter, that is a filter that allows you to choose a particular value from a drop-down list of values. And then based on the chosen values, the results of the um, OData services are then filtered down. Uh, in this video, we will be focusing on the search filter. Now, before we add the filter itself, uh, there are a few quick improvements that I will do to my uh, to the line item data that is being presented over here. So uh, we have under content item. So right now I just see the, um, the values that are being returned by the OData service. Um, I don't see the label names. So I'll just go ahead and quickly add in the label names uh, in front of the respective fields. So we have customer. This is the customer name. This is going to be the product ID and then the product name. Finally, there's one more field that I would like to add in over here and that is the invoice number. The field for that in the service is the order ID. Let's put in a slash just to separate out these. So this is how the invoice item would then look like along with the field labels. So now let's go ahead and add in the actual filter. The filter is an attribute that belongs to the that belongs under the attribute of configuration. So let's open configuration and then right after destinations, let's type in filters. There can be more than one filter that you specify and all of them will be then present under filters. Now we are going to be creating a search filter that allows the user to search for the invoice records based on the product name. So this means that the user can type in the name of the product in the search bar and the results that are returned by the OData service and that are going to get displayed over here will be filtered based on what the user has typed in the search bar. Every filter is going to have a name. So let's call our filter search product. So you can see as soon as we have um, specified the name of the filter, you can already see it appearing, in, uh, appearing on your card preview. The first thing that we are going to do is specify the type. As we had mentioned earlier, there is a search filter. There is also a select filter. This is going to be a search filter. So let's specify the type over here as search. The next thing that we are going to specify is a default value that would appear in the search bar. So I'm going to take the product name of Chai and specify it under the attribute value then this would appear as the default um, default search term in the search bar. The last attribute that we'll specify under the search product filter is what is called as the placeholder. Now the text that you specify for the placeholder is a text that appears in the search bar if uh, nothing has been entered by the user. So that's the placeholder text and it can be used as a guideline to the user so that the user knows what he's supposed to search over here. So this is all that's needed to specify a search filter. 
you have the filter name and then under the filter name you specify the type as search and then you have um, a default value and then a placeholder text the last thing that has to be done is that when the odata request is sent to the northwind server to retrieve data for my invoice list the filter that i have specified here and and the value of this particular filter that has been set in this search bar has to be taken into account that means that i have to modify the data request that is being used for this particular list so let's locate that data request that's this one right under content so the modification that we are going to do over here is that right after url we'll put in one more attribute called as the parameters and the parameter that i need to specify is called as the dollar filter now if you have worked with odata before you would know that the dollar filter specification is used to filter out your odata results based on certain search conditions now my search condition is that i want to look for the filter value in the column product name now there are different ways in which this can be done i'm going to use the substring function so i say substring of this takes in two attributes the first attribute is the string that is to be searched for so the search string this is going to be the filter value of the search product filter so let's put that in we say filters then the name of the filter and finally value the second attribute is going to be the column name within which the search string has to be searched for and that is of course the product name and we close it off with is equal to true there of course has to be a comma between the two attributes of the function so what this does is that in the odata response that we get from this particular url it adds in a filter in all the records we search for the current value of the filter within the column product name and if we find it or if the condition is true then that particular records are are uh, sent back and the remaining are all filtered out so as you can see the preview function is now reflecting this filtering functionality that we have built in the default search value of chai has been set in the filter here and this is then being used to filter out the invoice items from the odata service to only those where the product name chai is there let's clear out this filter value and see what happens then in that case we get all the records as we used to get before and we can of course see the placeholder text that's here let's try filtering with another um, product and this time we'll use the veggie spread now note this is a pattern search which means that we don't need to specify the complete search string we can even specify a few characters so let's say we just specify vegi and then the odata response is filtered to only those where the product name is has this particular pattern which is veggie spread so i hope now the way to add a search filter in your ui5 integration card is clear to you all it requires is for you to add or define a filter in your configuration and then modify your data request that you are using to set up your item the modification that you need to do is to add in the dollar filter parameter so this is a simple yet powerful improvement that you can make to your ui5 integration card that is going to help your business user tremendously if you found the content of this video useful uh, please do consider subscribing to the channel or dropping a like for this video so that's it for now in the next video i'll show you how to add a select filter in your ui5 integration card so until then take care and goodbye